Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I have a double candle review for you today from Bath and Body Works. And I'm not gonna lie to you, these are two very odd candles and they didn't perform particularly well either. So, twinsies. <laughs> the candles in question are, they're both in the neutrals line once again. Um, cardamom and vetiver which is in this kind of like muted, earthy kind of orange. And then Wild Rose and Suede, which looks like this. Also look at these, woo! That is for St. Patrick's Day, okay? Let's start out with Wild Rose and Suede. So the notes on this are Pink Tea Rose, Soft Suede, and Warm Amber. And um, this candle has been out long enough that you probably know it's a little bit of a bait and switch. It doesn't really smell very rose-like. And frankly, it doesn't smell very amber or suede either. This candle makes me smile. And I have to be honest, this is true for this one and for the cardamom and vetiver. I like both of them on cold much more than I liked them burning. So I would say that this candle is much closer to a laundry day scent than to anything floral or masculine leaning leather. Yeah. There is definitely some sort of like musky component to it. Um, and I don't, I don't disbelieve that it's amber. It is kind of a white amber though. It's sitting up a lot higher and this candle is very powdery, very powdery dry. So the tea rose here, whatever rose note they're using, and it could very well be a rose note, tea rose tends to be not quite as deep powdery and evocatively rose-like. Tea rose tends to be a little bit more generically floral than um, rose-like. And so you definitely wanna think that. It is, it's, it's a floral, but it almost goes a little bit white floral before it goes like a deep red kind of rose but it is very powdery, which is what mature deep red roses often go a little bit powdery. So it's kind of like the worst of both worlds in that it's like not really a true deep red rose, which I would kind of like, but it's all the powderiness of a deep red rose. And then I think there's an unlisted linen note in there. It could very well be a cotton or a cotton blossom. So if you said cotton blossom rather than pink tea rose, I would totally believe you. And um, yeah, I think there's a very strong either cotton or linen note here. With the powderiness, with the vague soapiness is going kind of in a laundry day kind of direction. So I would think about rebranding this as kind of like a cotton blossom and you could do a cotton blossom and suede um, because there is something kind of musky and um, masculine anchoring underneath everything, which I'm kind of loving. I'm not usually a laundry day kind of girl but on cold, I really like this. And I think it is because of those like leather-like masculine musky notes on the bottom of it. And then the fact that it's, it's not like an aggressive linen note or cotton note or soapy note, the way that you would experience in like white t-shirt or laundry day, for instance, which for me is, it's a little too much. Um, this is kind of like the more acoustic performance, just very like nice, sweet, and pleasant linen and soap with, like I said, a heavy like masculine kind of grounding component to it. I think it's actually really nice. I think it's really nice on cold, um, although it's nothing, 
it's it's not really very close to the branding of wild rose and suede so if you're a rose person this is definitely not your candle i would say that if you are a laundry day person this would probably be more your candle and or and i'm not even a laundry day person but if you if you don't mind a little bit of fresh soapy with some kind of nice deep masculine leaning notes I think you would like this candle. And for that reason, I would recommend it just for the fragrance. Unfortunately, upon it being burned, the fragrance lost a lot of its freshness <laughs> and just kind of came across really like heavy and stale. And then the larger issue was that the strength and throw was somewhere in the like four range. I think four is probably maybe even a little generous. It was a four, so I had to keep it in the guest bathroom for most of its existence, and I had to keep the door closed. The, then I could get like a good sense of the fragrance like when I came in, but then it was like too heavy, and it was choking me out. I think it's because of all the powderiness, for sure, but it was like... Whatever was like delicate and fresh and acoustic about the fragrance just completely went away when it was like shut up in a tiny space. But if you didn't shut it up in a tiny space, then you really couldn't smell it either. So it was just, uh, it just didn't work for me. The, the fragrance wasn't landing, it wasn't executed the way that it should have been. And then look at that. Like I have a strong almost half of the candle left because we did get the dreaded puny wicks at this point. And like, because it wasn't performing particularly well, even when the wicks were good and the flames were high, once it got to that point, I was like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think we're gonna continue doing this. The game is over now. So for that reason, I really can't recommend this candle. Although I do think there's a great deal of potential in it. And I, I mean, even when I pop the lid now, like it just makes me smile. I really like the fragrance, but it obviously needs some work. It's not translating once it's burned. The strength and throw is very low. And once again, we're plagued with those neutrals package, like major burn performance issues, which is to say that about halfway through, the wicks get very low get very puny, wax starts getting discolored, and you feel as though you can't really proceed. And as I've said before, I'm noticing that this is a constant refrain on these neutrals candles. And it, it hurts my heart because I love the neutrals aesthetic and I don't want it to go away, but obviously they need to go back to the drawing board. I don't know if it's the glass that they're using here, I know they burn really hot, but frankly, they've got a lot of other glass candles that burn super hot and sometimes even hotter and don't have those problems. So I don't know that it's the glass. It could very well be the wick. I don't know. I, there's some combination here, but they seem to be afflicting a lot of those neutrals candles. I even said something in store the other day and they kind of thought I was like crazy. I was like, so guys, the neutrals candles aren't performing. And they just looked at me like dead in the eyes. Like, what the, what the hell are you talking about? You know? And I was just like, I'm not, I'm not blaming you guys, obviously. Just if you could like move it up the chain a little bit, call the corporate office, do what you have to do. I think the corporate office needs to get the feedback if they're not getting it up to this point that the neutrals candles really need to be looked at and I can call the corporate office too and I will. But anyway, the, I don't know, I, I can't alienate my Bath and Body Works employees. They think I'm a little crazy, you know? And we only have one store in town. So like I need to keep them on my side and I, I coach myself every time I walk in, I'm like, be cool, be a normal customer, like don't be weird. Don't be uncool. <laughs> like the Countess, Countess Luann. Don't be like uncool. All right, next candle, which is very similar in many regards, is cardamom and vetiver. So cardamom and vetiver, the notes on this one are warm cardamom, vetiver, and white amber. So pretty like unsurprising, there's no twists there. 
cardamom, vetiver, amber. On paper, you're looking at probably a heavy, possibly men's cologne. Um, that is not the case when you smell it. This is another candle that I really, really like on cold and did not do well in person once burned and is a little mismarketed. So what I'm getting very strongly here, and I mentioned this when I hauled it, I'm getting Palo Santo and Sage vibes from this candle. Now, every time I go into a Bath and Body Works store, I make a point of getting the Palo Santo, and they've got several different iterations of it on the floor right now. Getting the Palo Santo candle, getting the cardamom, setting them side by side, smell, 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 smell. Every time I go into a Bath and Body Works store, just because, I don't know, maybe today I will smell something different. Maybe today will be obvious that these candles are so much different than each other. I do not think that they are. Now, don't get it twisted. I do think that they are different fragrances, but the differences between them are so marginal, it's kind of crazy. So I would say to you that you don't need cardamom and vetiver if you already have Palo Santo and Sage, okay? It's like six or half dozen. And for me, I prefer Palo Santo and Sage. Let's talk about it. So first of all, the dominant note here, dominant is a very warm resinous wood like a wine like wood and to my nose it's palo santo and i think it's their palo santo note and it's a very strong palo santo note not palo santo original because palo santo original is this palo santo note but it's combined with a whole lot of like musky masculine elements. So original Palo Santo for Bath and Body Works actually does go fairly, like just a touch cologne, like in a beautiful way. But I love Palo Santo. I do, I think it's gorgeous. Palo Santo in Sage is more of an acoustic performance for Bath and Body Works. It's a really beautiful Palo Santo wood with a very obvious sage note. And there isn't a whole lot else in the candle. Like they haven't mixed in cologne-like elements, musk-like elements, or body care elements, soapy elements. There's like a lot of different, like kind of cliched Bath and Body Works notes that they could have added to that Palo Santo and Sage. And what I love about it, and what makes me love it even more than the original Palo Santo, is that it is so stripped down and so pure, yeah? This is for sure that Palo Santo note. And there is something kind of like herbal about it. If it's not sage, it's a sage adjacent note. I assume it's vetiver. I assume it's vetiver. Yes, it might be a little less sagey than the herbal note that's in Palo Santo and Sage, but honestly, it's coming across very similar. And then there's some deep musky notes to this um, that are are if if they're of if they're there in Palo Santo and Sage, they're much more like mitigated. Like they're very soft. This almost kind of splits the difference a little bit with original Palo Santo. So if we're gonna split hairs here and try to figure out some differences between Palo Santo and Sage and this cardamom and vetiver, I would say that it's a little heavier on the musky component and the herbal element is maybe not so brightly Sage as in Palo Santo and Sage. But the Palo Santo note is like crazy. It's like taking over the candle. So um, when our like brand new, refurbished, renovated Bath and Body Works store opened, there were several like big wigs in the store. You know, like corporate people, like walking around looking cool, clicky shoes. Hi, how's everybody doing? How do you like your store? You know, all that kind of thing. And I was like, <laughs> I was having one of my moments. And I'm like, you. Smell this candle. <laughs> Does this smell like cardamom vetiver to you? 
I had a big week there. I'm like, so here's the thing. The corporate people like don't know anything about product. And I noticed this, like when I worked in retail, um, we got directives all the time from the corporate office. But when a corporate office employee actually showed up in the store, they literally knew nothing about the product on the floor. Like we did, we were selling it all the time. But when you're like way up, you know, up the corporate ladder, like you think about like numbers and big picture and revenue and all these different things. And you know far less about the actual product that's in the stores. Yeah. It's kind of an unpleasant revelation when you work as an employee. Cause then you, you kind of lose a little bit of respect cause you're just like, Ugh you don't really know anything about this. We know more about this product than you do. And then we start to resent directives, especially that don't make sense to us, right? Okay, anyway, close parentheses. The big wig was like, oh yeah, I smell cardamom. I smell vetiver. I definitely don't smell sage. And I'm like, you're just reading the, oh, it's just, it's worthless, it's worthless employees though that I've, I'm like, tell me there's not a strong wood note here. Tell me there's not a strong Palo Santo note. Why is there no Palo Santo listed on the bottom of this? And I don't smell any cardamom. The only cardamom that could be here is contributing kind of like a vaguely soapy smell, which cardamom can do that, okay? So it's like a Palo Santo and Sage version that's a little like basier and just a, a soup, a soapy nuance. Yeah. Otherwise you're not going to smell that cardamom note. Now that new sweet vanilla orchata by Yankee Candle, that is a true cardamom note. You can smell that cardamom in there for sure. I, you can't really smell the cardamom here. And Whatever the herbal note is, it's kind of hard to tell what it was. And honestly, if you put this in my nose and said, what is this herbal note? I would probably tell you sage. I would probably tell you sage. This is all my way of saying, I don't know, like very few people have reviewed it. And I keep trying to pick people's brains and being like, what does this smell like to you, right? Um, I feel like I'm going crazy. And I know I'm gonna get clapbacks of people being like, it is so not Palo Santo and Sage. Okay, maybe not, but like, what are you smelling when you put your nose in here? Like it's a strong wood candle. Why is it, why is there no wood on the bottom? It's fine if it's like marginally different from Palo Santo and Sage, but at least be honest about the fact that like 80% of this candle is Palo Santo wood. Like, and it's just not listed. And cardamom is negligible in this candle. It might be contributing some soapiness. And frankly, it's not good. It's not good because when it's burned with, as with like the rose suede one, like I was getting a very shy, like four or five out of it. I think five probably, it was a little bit louder than the rose suede. Um, and when I put it back in the master, bathroom and let it do its thing for a couple hours. If I open the doors, I could smell it. I could definitely smell it. So I think it's at least a five. It might be a 5.5, you know, something like that. It's somewhere in that range, which is basically what the Palo Santo and Sage is, by the way. The Palo Santo and Sage is somewhere in the five to six realm. And that's exactly what this kind of was. But I, I didn't like this one. As, as strong as it was like Palo Santo and Sage, like it almost made me nauseous a little bit. It was just, it was so, even though it was light and it wasn't giving me strength and throw, the strength and throw that was, it was just landing like a ton of bricks. Like it was choking me out. It was heavy. It was like smothering. Like I felt like I couldn't breathe when this had filled the space. Um, and in that sense, very similar to suede rose in that it was like a weak candle that when you finally got it in a place where like it could fill the space up, then it just felt like way too heavy. So it vacillated from like too weak to too heavy and there was just nothing in between. And in that sense, the execution isn't right. Palo Santo and Sage doesn't make me choke. There is almost like a lightness, like I said, and a purity, if not an ozone kind of quality to that Palo Santo and Sage that definitely puts it in a very rugged place, but at the same time, it isn't overwhelming the way that this kind of was, but was also super weak. 
And this one actually deaded out bef like well before this one deaded out. So as you can see, we've got an enormous amount of candle left. But for me, like I would think about burning it and I'm like, let's try cardamom and vetiver again. And I'm like, oh, I can't. I can't, it's so gross. Like I just don't, I don't, I don't wanna do that. I just wanna breathe. <laughs> I don't like this candle. And it's so weird because it's so similar to a candle that I adore, which is Palo Santo and Sage. But this one is just, it's like the evil, evil twin of um, Palo Santo and Sage. So there's my recommendation. That's my assessment. Cardamom and vetiver is the evil twin of Palo Santo and Sage. I do not recommend. And if you like that kind of vibe, I strongly recommend Palo Santo and Sage. Yes, it's not as strong as it should be, but I think it's a better candle and I think it's more palatable, it's more pleasing, it's more pure. Get a Palo Santo original, get a Palo Santo and Sage, and I think you're gonna have the best of whatever this is. I, I just can't begin with this. I don't know. I don't understand the branding. I don't understand the marketing. I don't understand the performance. I don't understand why we have it on the floor at the same time that we have two iterations of Palo Santo and Sage and original Palo Santo. There's some redundancy here. Let's, let, there's some redundancy. And I called Kringle out for redundancy. I can call Bath and Body Works out for redundancy too. No. We don't need this candle. We don't need this candle on the floor. And the fact that it's not as good as Palo Santo and Sage gives me even more energy to say it's a no. It's a no. It's a no. And it's in the neutrals line too. I mean, they're just plowing the same ground as Palo Santo and Sage. No. Okay, friends, that's the two I've got. Sorry those aren't like better reviews, but I really just can't recommend either one of them. They're both odd. They both have potential. Um, and I'm much, I'm more happy with Wild Rose and Suede than I am Cardamom and, and Vetiver because this one is just so redundant of Palo Santo and Sage. Whereas this one is different and it is unique and it's its own point of view. And for the most part, we don't have anything on the floor like it, either right now or in recent memory. So I'm actually much happier with this. And I think on cold, it's a really, really special, but unfortunately it just doesn't translate when burning and the performance was not good on it. So it just needs to go back to the drawing board across the board, it really does. It could use a little bit more brightness in it. And I sense that brightness when I smell it on cold, but the brightness goes away once you burn it and it just becomes very like heavy and kind of smothering. So it's a no, it's a no for me. Um, so those two are, we're done with these. We're not gonna purchase these again, at least in these iterations. Um, but stay tuned, I've got a review of a Homeworks candle coming up, and then I've been burning a lot of other Bath & Body Works ones too, and I have so many still that I need to burn. So I've been burning the tropical ones, Beach Weather, Tropidelic, those will be coming down the pike real soon. Um, and then I also have those Morris, the William Morris candles that I need to burn. So the fern candle, the greenhouse fern candle, the um, lavender vetiver, and the um, birch, the birch and bergamot, I think, those three I have. And then I also have a couple other neutrals. So the um, blue verbena and lime, which I'm really hoping for, although it's in neutrals and I'm worried about it. And then I have a couple more of the black history ones. So I have Yumi in the sea and I have Anna's garden as well. So we've actually got a ton that we still need to burn from Bath and Body Works. Um, and I'm hoping that by the end of the month we have some winners in with all of that because we still haven't, if you're noticing, we still haven't had a good strong Best New Candle 2024 from um, Bath and Body Works. And I know it's only March, but it is March. Yeah, so I would have loved to have seen at least one strong candidate for best new candle at this point. I do see a lot of redundancy and I would say that Bath & Body Works has been plagued with a lot of performance issues the last two months. It has not been a strong couple months for Bath & Body Works, at least in terms of performance, if not in terms of the candles they've been offering us. Although there are many that are very close and that have good potential. And I liked Gwen's note. 
Oh, that was nice. Despite its off-putting cold smell. Ugh. Anyway, I'll link these down below if you're interested, but between us, I think you should probably pass on it. I'll catch you guys in the next one.